Hi, so um, my name is Rory Fulger um, and I have with me uh, Jessica She. Hi, Jessica. Hello. Um, so I, um, I work in education at Wolfram um, and Jessica is a um, high school student. Do you want to do a little intro for yourself, Jessica? Um, yeah, so uh, I'm a high school student at Jamestown High School from Virginia and um, I participated in the Wolfram summer camp this past summer. Awesome. Great. So today we are going to have a little bit of an explore together through uh, Wolfram's coronavirus data. Um, so, yeah, so I thought we'd just start out. We just, I don't know, let's just have a look and see what the coronavirus is according to Wolfram Alpha. Um, because, you know, we like Wolfram Alpha here. It's all fun. So we, I, to preface this, I, know, I don't know if you know this about me, Jessica, but I, like, haven't taken a biology class since I was, <laughs> like, 15. Okay. So I have no idea what any of this means. So, and Jessica is a biology whiz and is going to tell us what things mean as um. we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well, you know, this is what Wolfram Alpha thinks. It's got lots of data. We know uh -huh. this data. We love we love Wolfram Alpha. All sorts of fun we're having. Um, but the cool thing that we have now, um, oops, hello. The cool thing that we've got going for us is um, that, Wolfram Alpha, that Wolfram now has a whole load of actual data in our um in our data repository so let's just see what what data we actually have uh how do you spell coronavirus you know i'm dyslexic it happens <laughs> um okay so we have many many a data um i was thinking this is okay you know maybe we start off with that like patient medical data um, yeah. you know, that looks like a, an easy data set to look through. Um, yeah. that sound good? Yeah. Okay. So I'm mean, going to open that up using this sneaky piece of code that I already wrote. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what, what can we see? What are we looking at here? Um, we have the ages, sexes, cities, countries, date of admissions, onsets, confirmation, symptoms travel history there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff and i assume mm -hmm. that, that some of this data is only available for the relevant parties um where should we start i reckon i don't know let's do something let's do something simple let's make a fun kind of um I don't know. Let's let's make a word cloud of all the symptoms. Does that sound like a fun place to start? Just so that we can yeah. have a look at <laughs> like how the data works. So let's see. We will want to do a normal of so I named the data set medical data. Um and then to get everything in a in one column, um we type in all for all the rows and then the name of the column, which I believe is symptoms. Um, and let's, let's see what that gives us. Okay, lots of, lots of missings. Um, I bet you that that'll be because there's some weird list formatting here. So I bet if we do some, all, if we get, again, um, all, and then just like the first column, Okay, that looks much more normal as data. So let's get up the cases of everything except, uh, if I can spell except, C-E-P-T, there we go. Except if it's not available. Um, we need an extra <laughs> bracket there, Jessica. Always need extra brackets. Okay, awesome. There we go. That's a lot of that's a lot of symptoms. Let's make a mm. word cloud. 
Um, cool. Shopping. <laughs> the main symptom of a virus is fever. Yeah. Damn. What else have we got? Um, yeah, looks like a lot of people have coughs. A lot of people. Yeah, looks like it's presenting kind of like. And you know, asymptomatic, which is apparently also a symptom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <I> don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, somebody asked in the chat um, who was talking, um, so I'm just gonna do a quick little reintroduction to ourselves. So uh, my name's Rory. Um, I work at Wolfram um, in kind of education um, zone. So I'm an instructional designer and technologist. Um, and Jessica is a high school student who attended the uh, Wolfram High School summer camp in 2019, um, and. Yeah. We are just hanging out, exploring this data set. We're going to have a great time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, what should we do next? So should we, I think, Maybe I don't something know. something with these, like, locations or... Yeah, okay, so I think, I think, why don't we do locations in, when we look at, um, oops, yeah, here we go. When we look at the epidemic data. I think that'll be more more interesting in the epidemic. Data. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Let's just do another like easy thing. Yeah. Let's make like a histogram of the the ages of the people. Like what kind of what kind of ages we've got going on. Um, let's see. This will be um, ages. Oops. That's not that's not correct. Is it age? Yeah. There we go. Okay. And then again, let's delete the missing ones. Oh, we've got some intervals going on here. So we're going to want to take the cases that are integers just so that we just have numbers. Whoops. Well, it's because integers is not the real one. Um, and then we'll just make a histogram. Cool. There's a lot of middle-aged people. Not many young and not very many old. I wonder mm -hmm. how common that is. Do you know how common it is for like old people to be less affected than middle-aged people in viruses? Um, I don't know exactly. I don't know but I think it might be like dependent on like the people that the, like are interacting so maybe the old people aren't going out as much and coming into yeah. contact with the virus that would make sense that would make sense yeah yeah cool um okay i really like the idea of having a look at the um location type data so let's have a look at this epidemic data that we have going on here um, do, 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 do. Okay, what do we have in here? This is a lot of time series mm -hmm. for each location. So that's pretty legit. Now, as people who hang around on data focused or from live streams will know, time series can be both super fun and also like slightly complicated to actually work with yeah i kind yeah. of played with this data set a little bit and i yeah totaled up all of the confirmed cases across the world and created like a graph for it nice yeah <laughs> but like Sweet. the time series are kind of weird to work with <laughs> they kind of are they they can be they can be a lot but it's good that they have a point for all 27 points for every single like location, which helps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's, let's try making a dateless plot with like all of them. Um, I think that would be cool. And then we would want the plot legends to be, um, 
let's see, we'd want that to be the normal of the academic data for the administrative division. So that's the list of locations. Uh, let's let's put them at the bottom. I'm just gonna uh, place. Of, we're gonna need to have it normalized uh, so that it's like in a list. Um, whoops, hello. And then we have um, normal epidemic data of all of administrative division. Um, and then we'll want to place it. Oops, place it. Wait, I have too many brackets open. Low. Um, let's see how we do with that. So hopefully, yeah, here we go. Wow. That is so many time series. So this is a confirmed confirmed cases for all of these, these places. All of them, all of them, all of them, including the ones that don't have place names. So that's good. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, okay, Jessica, my high school teacher mode. What do you notice that is that is weird slash wrong about this, this data, about this graph? Um, well, we can't see all of the results, I guess. No, we cannot. <laughs> Let's have a go at doing, what will that be? That'll be probably plot um, range. Yeah, plot range. I think I, if you do like plot range, like all or something. Nice. Think? Let's give that a shot. Mm. Oh, hello. I put that in the wrong place. Yes, I did. That's inside the wrong bracket. See, this is what coding is. We're just hanging out, trying to make lines work. Um, okay. Well, that's big. <laughs> big in in Hubei. Hubei. Yeah, it's uh, Hubei. Hubei. Awesome. Yeah. Let's, let's go see. I'm assume that should be the province that. Wuhan is in, so. Yeah, I assume so. Um, let's just have a little, um, let's see where that is. Uh, in China. Um, weird. I press the wrong button. Okay, so here it is on a map. Sweet, yeah. So this is our, our nexus. Um, okay, cool. So I think that this, this graph is not super helpful in exploring the data, right? Because it's got mm -hmm. so many of these lines. Why don't we try... I don't know. What can we try to do? Why don't we try just just doing China? Just selecting all the places that are in China. Um, so that we don't have all of these all of these hundreds of lines that are telling us random things. Um, let's take this down here. Um, and we will Okay, we want only the, do, 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 do. if we select um, at um, country, I believe it's called, equals equals China, um, we'll need a funky little ampersand. Um, As so that should give us just just China. Okay, I wonder if this is more helpful. Like, you know, slightly. You can see a little more detail. You know, I think that's fun. Mm -hmm. Do you have more ideas of, of what to do with with that plot other than looking at? Um. 
<laughs> Should we try with recovered cases? Let me see what that is. Let's see how our data looks for that. Okay. Well, it's nice that that's also going up. You know, yeah. that trend looks the same. Yeah, it looks almost exactly the same. Yeah. I'm um, worried to try for, for deaths because um, I assume that's also going up. Yeah. Sad face. Um, okay, well. Let's let's do some actual geographic data. Let's find real. Um, so I think if we go have a look in the um, Wolfram data repo, um, let's go just have a look at the documentation. Let's see what kind of plots they have already made that we could steal. Um, <laughs> This is this is how we this is how we code. Um, okay, this looks interesting. Let's start with that. Um, so we have already named this. So this is called epidemic data. Um, group by country, total of confirmed cases, last value. Yeah, let's see. Let's give it a shot. Okay, cool. So what what is this telling us? This is telling us that there are a lot of cases in China. I think we probably knew that already. Mm -hmm. Why don't we... Why don't we just do China? Why don't we just... Why don't we do like a... Ooh, hello. Why don't we do a more um, drilled down version just straight, straight into China? Does that sound reasonable? You know, so we can get yeah. like, yeah. Okay, let's see what what format this data is in. Okay, so this is this is what we want. We but we want administrative division to the biggest confirmed cases value. Um, let's go see what what format like our data right now is in. Um, so if we do like a normal of the epidemic data and then we just want we just want China so we'll select um, well we did that already up here so let's just take this little section and move it down to here and then um, we want all of um, hmm Interesting. So we want to. We're going to want to apply a um, a function to each column. I'm going to say um, so that we can find vision. We're just going to want what it is. Um, but then for the confirmed cases, we're actually going to want like the maximum value in the time series, right? Yeah. Do you know how how would we do that? Um, let's see. Uh, we want to enter a time series. Um, so we want, oh, let's look it up. Let's see, um, time series in the documentation. How do we find values in a time series? Extracting properties and values. It's just values, so that's nice. Um, time series. Values. It's interesting that that is confusion. Um, and then we're just going to want the max of that. Do we reckon? 
Let's try that. Let's give it a shot. Maximum. Okay, let's see what we get. We should get a little data set. Oh, or not. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, wait, we haven't actually isolated that. We want the... We're going to want to isolate these two columns because those are the only two columns that we want. Um, let's see if that helps. It does not. Um, okay, well, we're getting this. We're getting this is kind of what we want. We're getting this, which is nice. Um, let's just try. Forget the normal of this. What does that give us? Fascinating. I would like it to not give us that, you know? Um. <laughs> this is, this is correct, right? This is how Max works. Yeah, I want the largest thing of, when I put in time series, I want to do this for confirmed cases. Hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to do, Jessica? Did you get, did you get me? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not quite Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, let's have a look-see. What have we got? You see, this is the greatest thing about coding, is that we end up with all this, like, random stuff. We never know, quite know what we're doing. You know? It's just what makes it fun. Um... Okay, well, you know what? I don't quite know why that hasn't worked. I know that. I had a quick look at this the other day, and I made this funky little function right here that will find for us. Okay, I'm gonna, just in the interest of time, tell us that this is what we would have got had that code worked. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, okay. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll roll with that. Um, and then we know that what we actually need for this, for this data um, is to have the administrative division mapped to the confirmed cases. So... In order to do that, we fiddle endlessly with all of the associations um, to find, um, to be able to extract the values. So if we do a value extraction mapped to this, then we should get at the end the data that we want. So that's chill. Um, so we're going to need to flatten that. Um, okay, and so now we should be able to make the same plot that we did up here, but just with this data right here. Let's call it something. Let's call it uh, China 
um, confirmed. Pools. We'll suppress this so that we don't have 10,000 things happening. Um, and then we should just be able to replace that and see what happens. Okay, beautiful. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Maybe you can make the range of colors a little wider. Yeah, let's do plot range to, um, let's see, uh, let's do, mm, well, our biggest number right now, we know that um, the biggest number is like super big. Let's do like 5,000. Okay, well, that shows us, that's 500. Um, okay, cool. Well, that definitely shows us the like progression as we um, mm -hmm. as we go. Um, so that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, <laughs> I was wondering. So I'm super into. <laughs> I'm kind of into this whole like prediction type thing. So, and I know that there's been a lot of like um, new, uh, I don't know. There's been a lot of news about like people trying to predict to predict the the spread. Um, and yeah, yeah. So I wonder if we can make a quick little predictor to. Um, to see that. So how about if we just, okay, so in order to make a predictor, we want like one, one set of this data. So let's just look and, okay, so then this data set is organized by, um, by confirmed cases, by number of confirmed cases, that's how it's sorted. So if we just get this, uh, this, Point, then we get these uh, these three time series. So if we actually want that in a normal form, then we could do um, we could do a pretty similar thing to this little value extraction to be able to put it into a predictor. Uh, um, so if we try to do this confirmed cases um, associated with the um, let's see. Does just this do? Well, okay. I changed my mind on that. I changed my mind, Jessica. I changed it. You know, that can <laughs> yeah. happen. That can happen. Okay. So what we would like. Let's just get this time series. Let's get the values of it. Um, so we have that. And we also have its dates. OK, that's cool. So if we do a little um, association thread of the values to the dates, then that would be good training data. Oops, we actually probably want the dates to the values, don't we? That would make more sense. Okay, now it's good training data. So as we know, predicting the future is super fun. So um, if we Let's call this our, um, our training data. Um, so that's good. And then we want to run into the future. 
by um, by finding like future dates. Well, no, actually, first we we just want to run the predictor. Action equals predictor is predict of this uh, training data. What kind of what kind of predictor do we want to run here, Jessica? Um, what method do we want to use? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think at this point we can be fairly random about it. Let's right. use a neural network. You know, all the cool kids right now are using these neural nets. Um, interesting. We get a little error. Um, okay, what do we need for predict? Ah, predict wants a list of rules, and we have an association, so yeah. we should normalize this. Um, oh, we need a double slash normal. It's beautiful. It's running. Perfect. Okay, beautiful. We have a prediction function. Um, okay, we would like to predict say the next like 15 days so how about we make a little little tiny baby function um and we call it just add days and then we can just do, do, do date object of x and then one of these really cool, cute things that you can do is, I think, if I just type in um, no, it would be just like um, this. You need to do cool little Wolfram Alpha things that let you do that. So, and then let's add days to this list of dates, which should give us dates from the future. Look at that. So this is January 20... Second. Interesting. Okay, maybe we need to add some more days to that. Just so that we end up um, at the... Oh, hello. It didn't work at all. Ah, I know why. It's because this isn't going to work. We need to map it to this. Now it works. Okay, now let's go back to 15 days. Um, so we start Wednesday the 5th, we end Tuesday the 4th. So, mm -hmm. sweet. Okay, so now we have future days. Let's do a prediction of these. Wow, I do a lot of machine learning things <laughs> on my computer, and so everything is called like future date seven. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay, of future. Yeah, look at that. Wow, this is this Jessica in my little, you know, this is what you should do. <laughs> Yeah. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> Learn from my idiocies. Um, okay, so let's make... Okay, we've predicted We've predicted some data. So let's make an association. Oh, if I can spell. Association. Thread of the future days <laughs> and to the depiction of future days. Oops, so many brackets. Okay, perfect. We love it. We love it. Um, now we're probably going to want to join those two um, data sets together, the training data set. So if we join uh, training data with 
Um, let's call this future. <laughs> I wonder if I've ever <laughs> called anything future data before. Um, and future data. Um, then maybe. Oops, no. Incompatible elements. Need an association thread of this guy. Okay, let's just let's just see what was our training data again. Okay, and this is ah, one of them is association, one of them is a list. <laughs> so, you know, we love that. Let's this okay we love it we love it that should work We've got a nice mix of <laughs> afters and fours um okay and now if we make a um a dateless plot like we did before mm -hmm. dateless plot of this little data set right here. Let's actually give it a name. I'm very bad at naming my data sets. Um, well, let's not give it a name. I feel bad, but it's fine. <laughs> um, that doesn't work because dateless plot is going to want something in a different format. Yeah, you see that wants it in lists of lists. So if we do list triple add, then here we go. It's beautiful. Look at that. Um, I... It's interesting how it goes down. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of interesting. I'm skeptical, I want to say. <laughs> I want to say I'm skeptical. Um, but you know what? It would be nice. I'm going to just add in a little red line at, at the, you know, this is huh? the real data and this is our predicted data. Um, fascinating. What, what do we think about that? Oh, <laughs> I don't think it's a... that great of a prediction. <laughs> it doesn't look like that great of a prediction. Yeah. Um, yeah. To be fair, I haven't really seen anybody make a particularly good prediction, like, on the internet. You know, there was that one guy who was like, Seven billion people will be infected by next Tuesday. Right. That seems, that seems unlikely. <laughs> it's like I used AI to do it. I'm like, okay. Good for you. Um, okay, well, you know, we've made this pretty cool thing. I say that we move on to the genetic sequencing data. Because you at summer camp made this very cool um uh, made a very cool uh, little like micro app that, yeah. um, that will allow us to look at gene sequencing. Mm -hmm. So I say we have a quick look over at that. Let's just import the gen sequence data. Um, okay, so what have we got here? We've got species we've got where it was a lot of them are like partial sequences so okay. um can you tell that by the by the length Is that what yeah so like the ones that are about twenty nine thousand bases are like the whole genome of mm, okay. the virus but i've looked at what other people have looked at and they're kind of just detecting mutations and i think on the second page there's one that has been determined to be the reference sequence. Um, if you like scroll to the right, there's one. Uh, yeah, one of them says like complete and then ref sequence. And I think it's the second to last one. So number 36. I'm not seeing that. It's number thirty-six. It's on, the, it's on the second page. Wait. I have I have forty-five pieces of data. Oh, 
Yeah, I noticed that earlier today, like my data, whenever I reloaded it, it would say like new updates. So I think they actually <laughs> added data yeah. like this morning. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, I think I think this data set is, it's, is on point. It's also the it's the one that starts with N C as a access the first one. So it's like NC. It's the only one that starts with NC. Huh. Okay. Oh, is it this one? NC? Yeah, that one was determined to be like the reference sequence. Cool. So I'm Can guessing use, maybe that was the first should, one. <laughs> should we use that as our reference sequence then? Um, let me pull up your little calculator. Because yeah. this is super <laughs> cool. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about what this, uh, what this does? Um, so it basically takes one reference sequence and then you can input as many additional sequences and it will basically compare these additional sequences to the reference sequence using sequence alignment. So, um, Sweet. there's Sweet. various measures of how similar the DNA sequences are. And it also like make some visuals, but I have to say that it takes a very long time to run. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> well, um, you know, we can just take like a small section of the sequence. Yeah. So how about if we take um, okay? What? Did, where did we work out it was in the data set? It's just number two. It's number two. Um, we'll take that. We'll just take the first like five thousand pieces of the data. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And let's go put this over in your reference column. And then it's going to take a, a hot second to do that. And then what should we compare it with? Should we compare it with some late China, like most recent China? Um, <laughs> Or should we compare it to? Uh, yeah, a I actually I did a comparison of like the reference sequence and then one from like different countries. Okay. So, um, should we you try can... this? Should we try this last one, the U.S. one? Um. Yeah. We'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oops. Okay. Uh, let's do minus one. So this is the final column in the data set. And we'll put this into the sequence box and we'll see how it goes. Cool, it found things. Yeah, so that um, part of the table is the longest common subsequence. And ah, it nice. is the exact same virus. Um, it's gonna be a very long subsequence. Yep. But um we showed that, we showed that they're the same. I, I they are like exactly the same, which is interesting. Yeah. yeah. So another thing that I did actually I didn't find one that was one hundred percent similar, but I think it might be because you took like the first five thousand bases. Right. I just let it run with all twenty nine thousand. <laughs> nice. Um nice. Um, I'm gonna go and pick, okay, we're gonna leave yeah. this one. As Another virus. thing we can do is compare it to the SARS virus and the Mar MERS virus. Nice. Like I did. That's a cool idea. And, um, you can I the, actually happen to have the SARS virus data on my desktop. Yeah, or you can use the import FASTA, um, like, uh, resource function that can like True. put the it's okay I got it um, okay. <laughs> SARS, SARS is this guy I don't really need you to print it like eight times um, let's get the first um, we'll do the first 5,000 or so 
um, again for this one, first 5,000. Let's take him all the way over here and we'll put him in this hole. So we still have a reference sequence from earlier. So that's the, the China one. Um, and now we're comparing to SARS, which is interesting. Okay, we've got some differences happening here. Yeah. Um, what What would you like me to What would you like me to show? Um, I don't know. Maybe this. I this think this is this is your coolest piece of piece of data visualization. Yeah. So they're still very similar. So um, what does what does this show us? T tell me about this visualization. So uh, basically, when it aligns it, it will add in spaces and try to like maximize the amount of bases that line up and are identically the same. So um, there's like the green, which means that it lines up and it matches, and there's a dark red, which means there was a deletion. So that means in one of the sequences, there's actually not a base there. And they kind of inserted a space and there's like a lighter red shade, which means that they have two different bases in the same spot. So, nice. um, And for, for us uninitiated biology humans, what does, it, what does it mean for like a base to be different? Like what are the implications of that? Um, It just means like, it's like, it has different characteristics, I guess. But when there's like a lot of bases that are the same, that might just mean that they have one similar or the same gene. Uh -huh. which, uh, would make sense because they're both coronaviruses. So right. it would, they kind of have some of the same features. But nice. um, you can also look at these like global alignment and local alignment scores, which um i guess it's a slightly better when we're like comparing like more than one sequence with the reference but right. um, yeah it has like a lo local alignment score of like 18,700 so that's a like really high score it just means that they're very very similar but when i compare it with mares it was like a lot more different like I got 83% similarity with the SARS virus and I got 68% similarity with the MERS virus so nice that's yeah cool. that's very cool um, awesome so uh, yeah have you had a look at anything else in this uh, gene sequence data that you um, I don't know. Because, you know, so we've, we've yeah, done a lot, a lot of stuff of, here. The thing is, with, like, this data, since all of the sequences are basically identical, right? <laughs> not exactly a lot to do with it. I did see on, like, the page for the data in the data repository. Um, there was something about like detecting the mutations. You can kind of list them out, mm. which is pretty, I think it was the last thing in there in the analysis section. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, let's have a look at the analysis section. Um, okay, fascinating. Mutations by country. Yeah. And since it is like, 99.99 similar there's not that many like, mutations that right not much not much is happening i guess um let's see if we can run hmm. i wonder if we need this drop tailing a function i don't know what that is um i wonder if that happened earlier yeah, here it is. Dropping our tailing A. Um. <laughs> I 
I don't quite know what this is doing, but you know, we're gonna see. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna I think... create what is in the data set. Okay. So. So what is what is this telling us? Um, I think it's like showing, like, where at different points of time and locations that mutations occurred. Mm, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's just taking a, a hot second to run. Um, okay, well, let's have a look in the chat and see uh, if he said interesting things. Um, do, 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 uh, I don't currently have data for um, the deaths per day of SARS like loaded up. Is that in the repo? Maybe Jessica I, could go have a I couldn't find it. Like I was okay. in like the Wolfram Alpha and like um, the data repository, but I don't think we have that. Cool. Okay, that's fine. Um, Barry wants to know the uh, the Wolfram language function that measures string distance. Um, I mean, we could we could have a little shot at doing. Um, at seeing the distance between two things. Um, I th I can't quite remember how to do that. It's like there's a degree of matching between two things. I'm sorry, Barry. I can't remember off the top of my head how to do that. Um, but yeah, okay. Well, um, this has been super fun, um, Jessica. We've like we've done some little predictions. We've gone through a whole load of data. We've, according to this, we have printed out a lot of different cells, like six yeah. times. You know, this is this is not how you do neat data science. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yep, but it's very, um, very rarely, uh, very rarely neat. Um, we have made some nice graphics. We've had a look at some plots. Um, I still think this is very cute. Um, okay, is there anything that you'd like to say oh. to everybody? Um, I'm mm -hmm. going to um, tell us tell us just just quickly um, about uh, Wolfram Summer Camp. So we are obviously recruiting for. Um, for Wolfram Summer Camp 2020, um, you are going to be a TA yeah. um, at 2020, right? Yeah. So that's exciting. Um, this whole uh, little data, um, this whole uh, genome blah, 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 sequencing thing, you built that at um, at Summer Camp, right? In, right. in the two weeks of, um, of really pretty intense project time that we have. Um, you built this very, very cool um, sequencing tool. Mm -hmm. um, did you have a good time at summer camp? Um, yeah, it was definitely a really good experience. I learned a lot, got to meet a lot of cool people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think really my favorite part was being able to work on a project by myself and kind of accomplishing something that was really big. And Absolutely short time period and there's definitely a lot of resources provided at the camp and um yeah <laughs> great that's awesome um i would love to encourage anybody currently hanging out on the live stream um to have a look at summer camp um if you have any teenagers in your life um it's a lot of fun we're having a great time um i have shared i've published the um 
the this notebook to the cloud and um, it should have appeared in the in the twitch chat um, and uh, it's been wonderful to talk to you Jessica um, I mm -hmm. hope that the people on the live stream have um, have had a good time and um, wonderful uh, I hope that everybody has a great time having a look through this data set um, as as we've discussed earlier it's being updated super regularly um, everything that you create if you create um, you know really cool data visualizations or uh, cool explorations of this data we would love to see those appearing on the uh, Wolfen community website um, feel free to share and um, other than that have an excellent day and um, uh, we'll see you soon.